Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. Got lots of news to get to today. Lots of commentary on the news. I always want to spell out that I do political commentary, not reporting. Otherwise, some idiot calls me out on it. Yes, I'm well aware that it is very much political commentary. Um, I have a big Trump update. And whether you love or hate Trump doesn't really matter. Um, I'm somebody who likes him. Um, I think the best man running for office is probably Gary Johnson. But then again, Johnson's wrong on a number of issues. He's wrong on immigration. He's wrong on a number of things. But I, I like Johnson. I think he's probably the most qualified to run. Uh, but having said that, um, I like Trump. I like that he's going to bring our jobs back. I like that he is strong on our border. And I like that he has a common sense approach to the way the world should be working. The people that are angry at Trump, and we're going to get to them in a minute, are people who are angry at Trump because he isn't playing ball the way George Bush did. So if by all means you think George Bush did a great job, if you're happy you voted for him like I am, not, um, then you know what you got to do. And again, why did I vote for Bush? Because I had thought that the war on terror was a temporary war. I believed him when he said that we were not going to stay there forever. And I, it's one of the only bad votes I've ever had. Leave me alone. I have voted for, I voted for the first Bush when I was uh, barely old enough to vote. I didn't know any better. I thought there were only two parties and then that weird third party, you know, independent something. Um, I was 18. I, then I voted for Harry Brown when I found out found out what uh, libertarianism was thanks to uh, C Magazine. Free shout out there. They're terrible anymore though. So whatever you do, you probably don't. Um, there is. I voted for Harry Brown again when he ran the following cycle. I then voted for. Um, I, I voted for Bush. I think there was one vote between the two. I'm not sure. I voted for uh, Bush because I did not like Ben Narek at all. And I voted for uh, Bob Barr, Libertarian. And then I voted for Gary Johnson. So I really only have one crappy vote when I knew right from wrong. Uh, at the time that I voted for the first Bush, I thought there was only Bush and Clinton. Out of the two, I still stand by what I did, considering I didn't know any better. Well... For those of you that are politically nerdy like I am, here are some more wonderful facts for everyone. I'm going to give you the Trump date here. And again, it doesn't matter if you do or don't like Trump. That's irrelevant here. What matters is that we're talking about the system, and a system to a large degree that wants to cheat him. And after the racial division that I heard that bonehead bastard Bernie Sanders talking about, I lost all respect for Bernie Sanders uh, as of today. Um, but... I don't want the man cheated, because if they can cheat him, then they can cheat your guy. Of course, it's happened in reverse order. How many of you know that Rule 40 was brought into the Republican Party to keep Ron Paul out? They said if you didn't win at least seven states in the primary or caucus, then you were not permitted to be on the ballot. Well, now they want to get rid of Rule 40 in order to stop Trump. You see how the party just changes the rules as they go. And you're supposed to support this. Well, I don't support this. I was with the GOP as long as they had Ron Paul. And when they dumped him, I dumped them. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to vote for Trump in the primary. Now, I don't know if I'm going to vote Libertarian or Trump in the election, but I'll tell you what. Trump is the only person on the Republican ballot that I'm going to vote for. And I will not change my mind on that. How many people are with me? If you agree, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment if you agree. We are not going to be hosed out of this. And I guarantee the left feels the same way with Bernie Sanders. They are not going to go to Hillary. They will go to the Green Party if they have to. They will not 
go to Hillary. Some of them are going to go to Trump. And you can prove this by looking up the number of people that left the Democratic Party right before Super Tuesday in order to vote for Donald Trump, which they did in droves. This is some Reuters. Foreign diplomats voicing alarm to U.S. officials about Trump. Now, what they should be saying, I'm going to translate this for you. I'll take it all of uh, politicies and put it into English for you. I'm real good at it. The people that have been hosing the U.S. forever are whining because now they may not be able to hose us anymore. For those of you that don't know the history behind the phrase, which I love to use, hosing, um, the, the Russians used to take someone and hose them down with water and then make them stand in the freezing Siberian cold. It, it's what it means to get hosed. Okay, we're going to look at the hosing here. Foreign diplomats are expressing alarm to the U.S. government officials about what they say are inflammatory and insulting public statements by Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump, according to senior U.S. officials, which, of course, they never named, so you have to be wonder if it's true to begin with. But having said that, Foreign diplomats are expressing concern that they won't be allowed to hose the American worker anymore. That's actually the correct translation of that. That's why you tune in. Officials from Europe, the Middle East, Latin America, and Asia have complained in recent private conversations, mostly about the xenophobic nature of Trump's statements, said three officials who declined to be identified because, of course, they're terrified about slandering the frontrunner of the party. Um, what it should say is officials in Europe who have destroyed their country by doing the very thing that Trump warns against, the Middle East, who think they should be allowed to export some form of Islam upon everyone, Latin America, who is sending us all of the people they don't want there, all of the people of intelligence are staying behind, and Asia, who want to send us contaminated food from Fukushima and who want to claim the South Sea as all their own while they take our jobs and make their employees work in slave conditions, have whined in recent private conversations, mostly about the very logical nature of Trump's statements. See how I transitioned that for you there? It says, as the Trump rhetoric has continued and in some cases amped up, so, too, have concerns by certain leaders around the world, said one of the officials. Um, they said they've got concerns from India, who, um, I used to drive cab, India, who, while we have people graduating from Stark State College, where I graduated from, in droves, in degrees that are applicable to, say, the Tipton Company, and no, mine wasn't, but I was a cab driver at the time. They get called over from India because it's cheaper to pay them to come here than it is to give an American worker a full-time job. Uh, and I saw it every day. I picked them up every day. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. I would see people who were going to Stark State who had graduated even who could not get a job and were working at the local restaurants in town. Meanwhile, they're flying people in from other countries at what would be slave wages or greatly undercut wages. And then sending them back so that they don't have to hire American officials. So that's why, an American citizen, that's why the officials there are complaining. Um, South Korea, South Korea is angry because Donald Trump wants them to help pay for the protection that we have given them long after the Korean War has ended because they think it should be given to them free. Um, Japan, again, wants to send us poison parts from the Fukushima area, among other things. And Mexico, who has been sending us uh criminals who have been sneaking into the country and raping in droves do i think that every illegal immigrant is a rapist no i do not but trump wants to make it easier and cheaper for you to get in legally he just doesn't want you to sneak in and that is a win-win for me and that is the way it needs to be my family is of mexican descent on my dad's side and unfortunately the gentleman did sneak in and you know what he was not a particularly good man, to tell you the truth. We need to know who is coming into the country, and that applies to my family as well. I'm the first to say that he was not the greatest person that ever lived, and he's somebody that should have been trumped out. Um, the Irish side of my family, they came here legally. The English side came legally. The Sicilian side on my dad's side came legally. But 
you know, you can't have people just roaming into the country in and out, in and out. You have no idea who they are, no idea what they're doing, and no idea if they mean us harm. That is not racist. A U.S. US official said it was highly unusual for foreign diplomats to express concern. They're complaining because we're not going to give them our jobs anymore if Trump is elected. Trump is going to take care of America first. And friends, that is not racist. That is just common sense because America has been dying. And if you don't believe me, turn on the radio and listen to Rihanna or Nickelback. Ah! Sikhs, who are, of course, if you don't know what a Sikh is, look it up on Wikipedia. Sikhs and Muslims hold rally in D.C. in support of Donald J. Trump. Now, first of all, Sikhs are the most pacific people ever. They are to, to war what Puritans are to war, or Quakers. They are all about not war. So don't give me this BS. Hello, viewers. So many of you joining in. Don't go away. Don't, do not go away. Nice to see all of you. Um, the, the issue here isn't whether or not Sikhs are warmongering. Okay, Sikhs are the most peaceful people ever. And Muslims. The, Donald Trump hates Muslims, and they're never going to vote for him. Sikhs and Muslims hold rally in D.C. in support of Donald J. Trump. Two people that in some countries are killing each other are now here uh, in peace. Jim Hoff, Gateway Pundit. And I was delighted to see this because you keep hearing about the peaceful side of Islam. You always hear about the peaceful side of Islam. And you never see them. You never hear from them. They're like the tooth fairy. Well, you know what? They do exist. They are here. The Muslims that I would love to have a beer with at the local bar, they exist in this country. They did come out, and they did speak, and I'm going to stand up for those Muslims today because so many people in the quote-unquote liberty movement, so many constitutionalists such as myself, are quick to complain every time Islam does something wrong, and we're going to get to a little bit on that later, but when Islam does something right, the average person doesn't stand up for them. And I think it's time that someone does. So it might be all quiet in other places, but it's not going to be here. Hat tip to the Muslims in this report. The group supports Donald J. Trump for president. Trump appeal has no boundaries. Sikhs and Muslims, uh, hashtag Washington, D.C. organized press conference in support of hashtag Trump today. Muslims and Sikhs, who I say again are extremely peaceful people, joined the Trump train. The group had Muslims for Trump and Sikhs for Trump signs made for this event. A representative of the Trump campaign addressed the gathering and said that uh, he is not against their communities. The event organizer told reporters, we agree with Donald Trump and that we should not bring people into this country before we can bet them. In other words, the very people who came from these lands and the very people who study the effects of certain aspects of this religion upon humanity are warning us that it could be dangerous to not bet these people first, to not know who they are and why they are coming. Here's a quote it's from uh, IBN Live. The group of Sikhs and Muslims, mostly from South Asian countries, have joined the Donald Trump bandwagon in the U.S. state of Maryland, asserting that the Republican presidential frontrunner is not against their communities. Under the banner of Sikh Americans for Trump and Muslim Americans for Trump, scores of Sikhs and Muslims held their first meeting in the suburb of Washington, D.C. in Maryland, where a representative from the Trump campaign addressed them. <laughs> Organizers of the event from both the Sikh and Muslim communities argued that the view of Trump about minority communities has been twisted and taken out of context by the mainstream media and claimed that the 69-year-old billionaire real estate magnet would create more jobs in the country which would benefit minorities and it could face it, there's not a lot of Sikhs around. Um, Trump is not against the Sikhs or the Muslim community. What he says is given spin. The mainstream media gives a spin because they're scared of him. He is not the status quo. He is not taking anybody's money, said Jasdip Singha, who helped organize the Sikh Americans for Trump in Maryland. And that's awesome because Hillary Clinton is going to outspend him in the uh, in the um, 
to run to the presidency. The Democratic establishment has more money than Trump does by himself. So, I mean, this is going to be a matter of people like you and I and these good people getting the truth out. He is not a racist. A prominent member of the Sikh community, Singha is chairman of the Maryland Governor's Commission in the South Asian Affairs and Chairman Board of Sikh Associations in Baltimore. It's hardly a, a small organization. In terms of that community, this is a very, very, very big endorsement. When he talks about Muslims, he does not talk about all Muslims or American Muslims. He spoke in the context of the refugee crisis, which we're going to get to in a minute, that has been happening in Syria. We Sikhs agree with him. Muslim Americans agree with him that we should not bring people into this country before we can vet them. And this was a then this was a temporary measures proposed by him, Senga said. And it's absolutely right. You cannot just allow people roaming into the country when you have no idea why they're even here. Um this is from Yahoo News, and I'm gonna explain this in terms that anyone can understand, and it's gonna be why you're happy that you didn't hear. When Donald Trump says that Mexico is going to pay for the wall, he is not saying that Vicente Fox or whoever is complaining this week is going to walk over and hand them the money. Not what he means. He means that he is going to take it out of them in trade. Something is going to cost more. Business is going to cost more. Taxes to come in and out of the country for goods and services are going to cost more. They are going to pay for it. That is how they are going to pay for it. He does not mean they're going to come walking over and give the money. So when this dumbass says that he is not going to pay for the wall, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Because it's going to happen in trade. It's not going to happen because he suddenly decides to see the light and give us the money. Come on, pay attention when Trump speaks if you're going to criticize him, dumbasses. There is no way in Mexico would fund Donald Trump's terrible plan to build a wall along its border with the United States if the Republican frontrunner wins the U.S. presidential election, the Mexican finance minister said. Well, what this dumb bastard doesn't know is it's going to be done in one way or the other, and it does not involve them willingly doing it. More than happy to make you do it against your will. We are tired of of you manipulating our country. We are not tired of it based on your race. We would be just as tired of it if the very white Canadians were doing it. They just don't happen to be. So don't give it to me. We do not want another country superseding the rights here. Neither do the Mexican citizens, Mexican Americans who are citizens here now either. Trump, the New York billionaire, goes on developer and former reality television star, sparked outrage in Mexico when he vowed to force Latin America's second largest economy to pay for the wall along the southern U.S. border to stem the flow of immigration and drugs. In a televised interview late on Wednesday, Finance Minister Louis Vitagari Vitig categorically rejected the proposal. Under no circumstances will Mexico pay for the wall that Trump is proposing, he said. Yeah, well, he is full of it because it's going to happen in terms of increased business expense. Building a wall between Mexico and the United States is a terrible idea. Yeah, because then you can't send us the worst of the worst anymore. It is an idea based on ignorance and has no foundation in reality of the North American integration. No, maybe what should happen is they should come in legally. And you're going to argue that they can't afford it. Trump is the one who wants to bring that price down. He wants you to be allowed to come, make it easier to come, but you've got to be coming legally. You cannot be coming over to sell for us, to, to sell uh, basically slaves into the American market. That is not a good idea. And I do not consider paying illegal people less money to not be racist. Like, do you ever understand that? People that are, are like open border people are way in favor of this idea that we should allow illegal immigration and we pay them a little less. That's fine. That, to me, seems more racist. Is it just me? It makes no sense to me the way the left thinks here, none whatsoever. It says Trump has accused Mexico of sending rapists and drug runners across the U.S. border. And well, that's exactly what's happened. And uh, he has vowed to increase the fees on some Mexican visas. And that would be people that we already know are a danger to the country. So, I mean, when he says he's not going to pay for it, I hope I've laid it out that that absolutely isn't true. Uh, the last of the Trump date here, before moving on to another, other news, 
Trump rolls out free market health care plan, Kurt Nemo prison planet. Now, I am, how many of you are always hearing that Trump doesn't have any plans? Trump doesn't have any plans. Guess what? They're wrong. Um, the Donald Trump campaign has posted the candidate's plan to repeal Obamacare and do away with the uh, ruinous individual mandate. You can see it here on, on Fact Cam. I will see if I can pull it up as a screen share as I go. I'm using Google Hangouts, so I mean, let's face it, it's Google. There's a 50-50 chance it's not going to work. All right, I think I got it here. The Donald Trump campaign has posted the candidate's plan to repeal Obamacare and do away with the ruinous individual mandate, which is exactly what needs to be done. Since March of 2010, the American people have had to suffer under the incredible economic burden of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. This legislation passed a totally by excuse me passed by totally bipartisan votes in the House and Senate and signed into law by the most diverse and partisan president in American history has tragically but predictably resulted in runaway costs, websites that don't work, greater rationing of health care, higher premiums, less competition, and fewer choices, the Trump website explains, and he's right on every word of that. I'll get to that in a minute. On his first day in office, Trump promises to immediately deliver the full repeal of Obamacare. In addition, it goes on to repealing this terrible legislation. The Trump administration will work with Congress to implement free market principles that will broaden health care access, make health care more affordable, and improve the quality of care for all Americans. In order to even seeks. In order to break up health care insurance, monopolies, the Trump plan to permit the sale of health care across state lines and allowing vendors to compete and thus lower prices for consumers. He says by allowing full competition in this market, insurance costs will go down and consumer satisfaction will go up. In other words, what we're doing now is we are treating it as if each state was its own country and they could not compete against state lines. That is a huge win for the insurance companies of each state and a huge loss for all of us. So don't tell me that he doesn't have any ideas, because he does. Um, it says the uh, consumers would be allowed to shop around to find the most affordable prices for exams and other medical-related procedures. Price transparency will be required by healthcare providers, organizations, and doctors. He doesn't have any plan. The plan will put an end to government and force monopolization of the drug industry. Congress will need the courage to step away from the special interest, that is, the people and the insurance companies who have paid for this racket to happen, and the pharmaceutical industry in favor of the private sector. Um, health insurance premium payments will be fully deductible under the federal tax system, so poor people will be able to put it onto their taxes. That's another part of his plan. But he hates poor people. It's a lot better than what they're doing now. But let me tell you something. Um, I make, I don't know, between 22, 25, 26,000 a year, something like that. I'm a DJ. Um, you can see here, I'm about to flick the camera off on accident. You're going to see here that I have cut the tip of my finger off a long time ago. I was lifting up a broken aquarium, and, and if you can imagine a peach, if you were to take a peach in your hand and take this here trusty knife and slice out a piece of the peach so that the the skin just kind of flaps down and the meat is hanging open. That's what this finger did. Um, they sewed it back on as a keyboard. Is, fortunately, it's far enough back that while I have lost some feeling, it's not the tip where you actually play. So that's helpful. Um, well, unfortunately, when I did this, um, it cost me like a grand, but I was able to afford it. I got it sewed back on. I got everything I needed. Fast forward to about a week and a half ago where I was thrusting upwards on a table that had a metal edge. And as you can see from the band-aid, because it's still too Frankenstein to show on camera, I did the same damn thing here. Although, under my new plan, there was no way in seven hells that I could afford to go to the emergency room. I just sat here and bled. Uh, Christelle, my wife, thought I was insane. I bandaged it and prayed to God I didn't lose the finger, okay? Don't tell me that prices haven't gone through the roof and destroyed the entire process of insurance because you're lying. It's not true. There's no way I could afford to use my insurance unless I was dying, okay? Luckily, this is going to heal up fine and nobody plays keyboards in the middle of their finger. But 
oh my god the man has ruined health care is my point i had great insurance prior to him so i mean don't tell me trump doesn't have any ideas there's more on it there on the site i'm moving on past trump for those of you that do hate trump <laughs> police appeal to lawmakers for future options on arming drones fox61.com my issue here is do you remember when the Patriot Act went into effect? They promised us that this was going to be about stopping terrorists. We're going to stop the terrorists. It soon became about busting your 14-year-old for a uh, drug purchase, didn't it? When we trust the police to arm the drones under extreme circumstances, which is the ones that they are going to claim are needed for such a thing, we're opening up the door, very widely, I might add. We're opening up the door for them to abuse the hell out of it, like they did um, the story I just told you regarding the Patriot Act. This is from Hartford. The drone discussion has been buzzing around the state capitol for hearings this week. Let me go ahead and put this back on screen share. So I don't have another camera anymore, so I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of at the mercy of this one, which thankfully works. Um, Monday, a bill to ban the weaponization of drones was discussed. On Tuesday, a bill to, to control the use of drones in many ways, including by law enforcement agencies, was debated. Lawmakers, it says, listened as a link there to testimony concerning restrictions on drones with cameras versus expectations of privacy. The bill would also require police to get a warrant to use drones in many cases. Well, you can get a warrant. You can get a warrant to do a... a, a, a DUI checkpoint, which is the most egregious affront on the Fourth Amendment ever. So don't give me this BS that warrants solve anything. Police made the argument that armed drones and law enforcement could be an effective weapon in public safety. Yeah, it could also be a way to start shooting uh, protesters. Um, and we've had a report that somebody's going to fly a drone into an airplane, into an engine, or into a weaponized drone, and we're concerned that we don't have the answers yet. So, of course, you know, it's all about stopping the extreme cases, right? Well, we've heard that song and dance before, and I'm sorry, we just don't believe it any longer. Plain and simple. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor. Make sure you look us up on Tumblr, Tumblr. Uh, why? Because I don't think anybody's on Tumblr. I really don't know nobody, but I have our show up there. You can also go look up the Media Speaks on YouTube. We have a new member. We have filled the chair of the missing... Uh, Kyle uh, Phillips. Her name is Anne Marie. She is freaking awesome, and you're going to want to make sure you listen to her. She's, uh, I think she's going to be part of the team now, unless something changes. Her schedule seems busy. Uh, she's in the, uh, her family works in energy, so I mean, she could be moving. But as it stands, I think we've uh, filled the seat. Uh, I love Sticker Junkie. Why? You will too. Go to StickerJunkie.com when you check out. Make sure you let them know you heard about it from the correct views, and you're going to save money on checkout just for doing it. And friends, that brings us to the dummies of the day. That's right, the hard idiot song. It seems that uh, the record label for the dumpy dumpy has decided that I'm not going to be allowed to uh, monetize my videos if I use the dum dum dumpy song. All right, bitch, I won't use your song. I won't promote you at all. You have now been banished from the show. <laughs> Bye, Tramp. Uh, Express.co.uk. Germany bans sausages. Pork banned in cafes and schools to not offend refugees. Now, how many of you know about the snitching group and the, the joke from a Blazing Saddles? Sausages are synonymous with German culture. I understand that eating too much sausage is probably not a real healthy idea. I get it. But, in moderation, fine. I get pepperoni on a pizza, for instance. Sausage on a pizza. Listen, this is why so many people are coming out in droves and coming out in support of Mr. Trump. It's not because we are against other cultures. It's because other cultures tend to be against ours. And we want to make sure that even if they don't acclimate and suddenly become good Americans, that they are at least not going to harm the rights and freedoms of others. 
And that is not guaranteed to us if you just let anyone into the country willy-nilly. If you don't believe me, then we're going to go into some proof regarding that here. An increasing number of uh, public canteens, child daycare centers, and schools have stopped serving sausages, bacon, and ham over religious considerations. Now, that's going to be remarkable the next time they go to order a pizza. Uh, you know what? It, 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 and why why does other cultures hate ours? Or maybe because we can't even enjoy a freaking bratwurst without you preaching to us the joys of Islam. Now members of Chancellor Angela Merkel's CDU party are fighting to keep pork on the menu instead of consumption of pork as part of the German culture. Now let me tell you something. Jews do not eat pork. And you always hear people blaming the Jews for this. Blaming the Jews for that. Well, I don't know about that, but I can tell you this. I don't remember Jews trying to stop a sausage party, no pun intended, the way that the Muslim culture has. I, I don't remember Jews protesting uh, sausage on pizza or any of that. Daniel um, Gunther, party representative, claimed it says that pork products are being taken off of school menus in schools, nurseries, and canteens across the country. He said the protection of minorities, including religious reasons, must not mean that the majority is overruled in their free decision of ill-conceived consideration. Thankfully, somebody has found a voice for the common sense person. Mr. Gunther argued that tolerance also means the appreciation and sufferance of other food cultures and lifestyles. He argued that those who don't want to eat pork don't have to, adding the consumption of pork belongs to our culture. That means you bastards that don't like it can go to hell. That's what it means. No one should be obliged to do so, but we also don't want the majority having to refrain from pork. This is as nuts as these ridiculous pita bone ads. German sausage is a part of the country's culture. At Oktoberfest in Munich, the largest beer festival in the world, sausages were served alongside steins of beer. And yet, you can't ban the burka, but you can ban the sausage. The move is likely to cause tensions among residents who support the indoctrinations of restrictions and the overflow of immigrants into the country. Again, it's all about the Germans don't like the immigrants. No, the immigrants seem to not be liking the Germans. You are telling the story in the wrong order. And that brings us to the last here, the last of the you are an idiot. More of our idiot music. Sorry, friends. Uh, results of the California primary should scare me. Bill Lilly, Truth Revolt. Listen to this. Shout out, Jimmy Kimmel. Call it peer pressure. Call it lying through your teeth. Whatever you want to call it, Jimmy Kimmel Live was able to catch people claiming to have voted in a non-existent California primary. For those of you with a brain on your head, you will know that California has not voted yet. Super Tuesday was last week, according to when I'm filming this. In a Super Tuesday edition of a regular Kimmel feature called Lie, Wit excuse me, Lie Witness News, Hollywood residents claimed while on camera to have voted for Sanders, Clinton, and Trump that very day. California's primary is on June 7th. How was your polling place? Participants were asked. Answers ranged from crowded to not too busy. One man expressed doubts about the new hologram voting system, which doesn't exist. Another voter said she had to re-register as a Democrat that morning to cast a ballot for Sanders, which couldn't have happened. Another voter claimed to have paid the new $10 fee to participate in the primary. Of course, that never happened either. So let's hope these people don't actually vote come election day in November. That is very true. If they do, let's hope they vote Trump or Johnson. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. It's called the correct views because I'm giving you very correct views. You can donate to the show if you wish. I'd like to buy a camera, for instance, or maybe Adobe Premiere. Um, the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Also, do me a favor, check out Jane's Transportation. If you're going to go anywhere, find out how much it's going to cost you through your normal cab, through Uber, or whatever. And then call Jane's Transportation. Let them know you heard about it on the correct views and see if you don't get a better price. Pretty good chance you will. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for tuning in. Hit subscribe and please hit share.